gosh. Okay. Um, so I have been um, making lists all day. My life is always kind of more or less just like me making lists about things. But especially right now, it's been a lot of me making lists because um, I'm moving to Korea. And anytime you move abroad, there's just like literally so much that you have to do. And it just helps me to feel organized and centered if I make lists about literally everything. I made myself some iced coffee. I didn't want any with caffeine, so I brewed myself some decaf. And also I got some oat milk. That's really good. Because I'm vegan, so like, you know. Right now, we are going to uh, find a suitcase because I need another suitcase to take with me when I go to Korea. Okay, let me tell you guys a story about my life the last six months, okay? So I moved back from Spain in January, and then there I was in America trying to figure out what I was gonna do. That lady kind of was looking at me like I was crazy because I think she saw the microphone on my dashboard. <laughs> anyway, so I moved back, was trying to decide what my life was going to be. And um, I applied to graduate school and I was accepted to graduate school to start on the track to get my PhD in art history, which is what I got my undergrad degree in and is what I love pretty much more than anything ever. I at first was super excited, I accepted. And um, then a few months down the road, I was kind of thinking that I really missed I don't know, like being home for a little bit had been great, but then again, like like four months down the road, I was like, this is kind of getting boring. America's great, but like also sick of it. So maybe I should just move abroad again. But then I was like, no, I got into grad school. This really feels like the right thing to do. I'm gonna go for it. So I started to look for houses in Philadelphia, which is where my grad school is. And like literally you guys, nothing, like no housing opportunities were apparent. And I was just getting kind of frustrated, honestly, because I wanted it to just feel more seamless trying to find a place to live. Just like, I don't know, I kept running into all these different roadblocks, but I was like, it's still kind of early. It's still like in the beginning of the summer. I think that, you know, things are gonna, gonna be easier later on. Then I um, I went to North Carolina to work at a summer camp for like two weeks at like the beginning of the summer. And while I was there, I, ran into my friend who I've known for like literally years. I don't even know how long I've known Margaret. I've known her for a really long time. Anyway, we were chatting, we were catching up, and I knew that she had accepted a job teaching in South Korea, but I hadn't heard the details of it. So she was just like telling me about it. And honestly, hearing her talk about moving abroad again, I was just like, I have to move abroad again. Like I have to I have to. It was just this like compulsion. But I was like, okay, wait a second. Hold on. Don't just jump. Don't just jump into this. Like if you want to do this, like that's fine. But you can't, you're going to grad school. You've accepted, you've paid your deposit. You cannot just decide to change course. Except that I can because I'm 23. So I thought, screw it. I'm going to try this out. So a few hours after my conversation with Margaret, I was on a walk with my mom. We were going to get some ice cream. And I was like, mom, listen, I had this conversation with Margaret where she was telling me about her job um, teaching English in South Korea. And I feel kind of crazy, so please tell me if I'm being crazy. But I really want to do it. I really want to go back abroad. I want to teach English again. Like, I don't, I don't think I'm ready to go to grad school. Because, okay, a PhD, guys, if you don't know, is a seven year long program. Seven year long. I mean, okay, I guess it could be five if, um, like if I did it quickly, but still minimum five year long program. That is crazy. So I just thought to myself, okay, if you're gonna do this, which I will eventually, I need to be like so ready to be in one place for seven years. And like right now I'm just not. So anyway, my mom was just like, Andy, if you're gonna move abroad, that is fine, but you have to be responsible about it. And I was like, word. I'm all in. Brody on the line, I'm tapping in. Gotta hear. So anyway, she was like, go back, make a list of pros and cons. Like, these are the pros of moving to Philadelphia. These are the pros of moving to South Korea. And then she's like, also. 
also don't just take the first job that you find make a list of everything that a job needs to have for you to take it and for it to be like a responsible decision for you you know financially and whatnot so I was like okay I can totally do that I'm going to you know make a list check it twice the whole thing make sure I'm gonna take a job that's like gonna be a good one so anyway fast forward two weeks later I had a job it met all the criteria on my list and I was kind of like thinking I was gonna take it but the final piece of the puzzle was that I had to email grad school and be like hey temple I know I told you that I was coming in a couple months but actually I'm not anymore um, would it be cool for you guys to like hold on to my spot until um, you know next year and Lo and behold they emailed back and they were like yeah, no problem. Go have fun in South Korea It'll make you a better student. Then I was like, oh um, Really that easy and they were like yeah, no problem. Like you've already paid your deposit Like we'll see you next August and I was like, okay, this is amazing. So Three weeks after I made this kind of impulsive decision, I had a job, I had accepted a job, and um, I had deferred my grad school for a year. So now, I am moving to South Korea in probably like three weeks, guys. Like, I don't exactly know when I'm leaving it because like visa stuff, but yeah, anyway. So here I am, and I'm going to buy another gigantic suitcase because I don't think my stuff will fit in a giant suitcase and a medium-sized suitcase that I currently have. My camera fell, but we're back. So, the thing about South Korea versus Spain, which is where I was living, is the climate is very different. So in Spain, it was like on the Mediterranean, I was in Barcelona, and um, it was just warm. It was too warm. Because I don't like warm weather. But um, this time, I've done good by myself, and I'm moving to a place that's cold. Seoul is where I'll be living. And, like the average temperature in January, which is the coldest month, it never gets below nine degrees Fahrenheit, it never gets above um, 40. So I'm pretty psyched about that. All right, so it's been a few days since I filmed that initial video. And uh, I know what you guys are thinking. Oh wait, I lost my train of thought. And I know what you guys are thinking. She filmed all of this in one day and she's just saying it's a few days later for the camera. But no, actually, I'm just wearing the same shirt because I wear the same thing pretty much all the time during the summer. But um, today is the day that I officially got my visa issuance number, which is super exciting because it's been held up in Korea for the last like two and a half weeks and it's just been this like very frustrating waiting game of just hoping and praying that it was gonna be issued soon but also with COVID just being kind of unsure of when that was going to happen. So anyway, I got that today, which means that this afternoon I'm going to go ship all my documents back off to the consulate in Atlanta. Atlanta will stamp my passport with my actual visa and then hopefully five days from today I'll have my visa back with my passport and I will be good to go book my flight and officially fly to South Korea. This has been, honestly, it feels like a really long time coming, even though I only made this decision a couple months ago, but it's just been a long time to get my visa and I'm so ready to be there. I can't explain how excited I am. This could not come soon enough. I dropped off my visa. I didn't film any of it because uh, it seemed like boring footage. I don't know, but um, it's done. <laughs>
my storage unit. It's gonna get real dark in here. To be honest, I don't even know if I'm going the right way. None of this looks familiar, but also it all looks the same. Oh gosh, it's so dark. I'm not alone anymore. Is this right? I did it. I found it. is that you put everything that you're not taking with you into a storage unit and then you come back in a year and you look at all the stuff and you don't want it. These clothes that I put in storage, I was like, oh, I love this. I'm gonna wear this when I come back. I just don't have room for it. But it's a lot. You will buy new stuff. Your style will have changed. So pro tip, if you move abroad, only put like furniture and kitchen stuff in storage. Don't bother putting your clothes in storage. But anyway, Seeing as my visa is sent off and I should be flying out to Korea next week, I have started to kind of really seriously pack. I'm using my brother's room as a staging area and um, I'm going to show you guys that. Okay, so first things first. This pile right here is my outerwear. I probably have way too much and I know that I won't take all of this. I doubt that I'll be able to fit all of this, but this is what I have so far. This is my favorite thing in the world that I have right now. It's this Calvin Klein down jacket that I bought at Macy's just a few months ago. I bought this specifically for Korea because I need something that is this warm. Next I have this great dress and this great skirt, both kind of more wintry pieces, both from Anthropology. Next I have my pants. I have three pairs of blue jeans and three pairs of black jeans. Next we have my sweaters. I'm gonna need a lot of sweaters when I go to South Korea. And then over here, I have extra toothpaste because they were having a sale at the store. And it's just nice to have like your own toothpaste. And then I have this green silk button down, this white silk tie front button down. I have this great cotton dress, this cute skirt, this cute skirt. Then I have this like pleated black skirt. Okay, then we're gonna come over here my other suitcase. I have some converters for the plugs over there. So this is just a box that has some really big ones in it for three pronged appliances. And then I have some smaller plug converters just like for normal two prong stuff. I have the best neck pillow ever, the turtle neck pillow. This thing is so comfortable and it's just the best for traveling and it's really small. Um, then I have these. These are like vacuum sealable packing bags, but you don't need a vacuum to seal them. You kind of just roll the air out and then they can press themselves down. So I'm going to try to figure these out tonight and see how much they actually help because this will really, really help with packing my bulky stuff over there. So I'll just put those on the floor for right now. This is super important. This is literally just a bag of Duke's mayonnaise. And I know some people out there are mayonnaise haters, but I love mayonnaise and like you just can't beat Duke's mayonnaise. A sleep mask. Bubble wrap. I will pack something in here. Probably mugs. A loofah. A two pack of my deodorant. They were having a sale at the store. A cute little ring light that my mom got me. Oh and my shoes. Oh my gosh my shoes. How could I forget? These are all the shoes that I have so far. A great pair of heeled boots. These brown boots. A pair of heeled booties. Then the tried and true. The one shoe that has my heart forever my trusty Doc Martens. That's basically all that I have laid out at the moment. I think I'm gonna go ahead and start putting some stuff in the vacuum sealed bags and see how it goes. It's not the easiest thing in the world, but it works pretty well. This is four sweaters, four. I'll 
also I just want to say for the record that I am being way more proactive about packing this time than I was when I moved to Spain. Normally I'm up until like three the night before a flight packing, but maybe this time I'll actually be well rested. <music> I just learned that you don't have to push all the air out from this blue zipper which was causing it to pop back open but you close the zipper and then you roll it and there's like an exhaust down here that the air will come out of I've been making this way harder than it needs to be do you guys remember that gigantic pile of things on this bed let me show you what it looks like now this is 10 sweaters, four coats, one skirt, one dress, one scarf. Isn't that so impressive? It's just insane. I mean, this is my gigantic down jacket. It's like almost a full length jacket and this is it now. My pro tip for packing, especially if you're moving somewhere cold, is to get vacuum seal packing bags because it will change your life and allow you to pack so much more bulky winter clothing. I'm My mind is blown. This is incredible. Okay, so it's been another few days since I filmed all the footage of me packing, and I wanted to show you guys a couple other things that I got in preparation for my trip. So I got some more luggage tags so that I would have enough for all of my suitcases. I got these baggage straps that will go around your suitcases and when they're going to be packed super full like mine will be they will help to just cinch you together um, so your zipper has a lower chance of breaking and then I got some anti-fog spray because I do wear glasses and um, wearing them with a mask on is difficult obviously because they start to fog up and that means that I don't wear my glasses like I should, which means that I have a massive headache. And on a plane, when I'm constantly reading something or watching something, I really need to have my glasses on. Um, so I bought this, and it actually works. It works great, and I'm super happy with it. So anti-fog spray. And then this is what I'm probably the most excited about. This is called an Airfly. And it's this tiny little device. You plug it into the headphone jack of your entertainment system on your flight and then you can pair your airpods to it or any other bluetooth headphones that you have so i have airpods um, and i have the noise canceling kind and i also have like the big over ear noise canceling headphones that are bluetooth and have an audio jack it'll be really nice on my 14 hour flight to be able to switch from the over the ear to the in the ear just to give my ears a break because after a while the over the ear headphones can make your ears a little bit sore. But I'm gonna go ahead and end this vlog here. It's been a little bit disjointed but I feel like that's reflective of how kind of this whole time has been for me. I got some pretty disappointing news yesterday that my visa won't be ready for at least another 10 to 13 days. So it's taking about three times as long as it was expected to. Um, and even though it's really disappointing, I just kind of have to trust that for whatever reason I'm not supposed to get to Korea until a little bit later. So I'm just trying to keep my chin up and do what I can to get ready to go, but um, I'm pretty much all packed at this point. So I'm basically just hoping and praying for a miracle that my visa comes earlier than the consulate told me it would. I think my next vlog will hopefully be um, in I don't know, about a week and a half, two weeks, and it'll be the vlog of me actually making the trip. It'll be like a little travel day vlog of me going to South Korea. If you've made it this far, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you guys when I'm on my way to South Korea.